I'm here at the Evergreen Museum in McMinnville, Oregon, and I bought this Lancer sight unseen. No logbooks, no keys, no nothing. It's been in there for over 10 years, I think 13 years, and we're gonna see if we can't get it started and see if this thing will ever fly again. Always the right time to mow the grass. I think we should just go get lunch. Got an awesome cafe here. Menu changes, summer, winter, all that fun stuff. And the tables, like this one is uh, Operation Jericho. It was a prison raid where they uh, broke some prisoners out in World War II and, and saved them. So that's just this fantastic place. This is the first time I'm seeing it up close and personal. I only saw as much as what you saw on uh, whenever we were walking through on the last video. So, and I've already paid for it. So now we gotta, I gotta see what I actually bought. And I'm noticing right away that just like myself, it's got a few screws, a lot of, a lot of screws missing actually. Um, that's a composite prop. It's electric, so it does turn a little bit. Uh, that's nice. It's got a knob in there that you actually turn it to make it turn, so that's good. Uh, and then this is, I think, overcompensation pedo tube for the size of the airplane. Are okay. It's been inside a climate-controlled museum for however long. We'll have to figure that out. I don't know yet. Uh, but it has this. Come on. Like little winglets? How do you not go wrong with that? Yeah, yeah, all right. All right, let's see, is it unlocked? I think it is, yeah, it's moving here, so. Uh, okay. Oh, yes. Hinge, oh, nope. Okay, yeah, gonna need, gonna need the struts, that's for sure. I wonder if we can go to like AutoZone and get some of these struts. Cause that's a great thing about experimentals. You can go to Home Depot, and get parts for this thing. Oh, look at that. So when you're inside, you pull that out and that's how you get out of it. Oh, look at it, it's got locks right there. <laughs> okay. And is that, oh, I bet this is when you're flying. That's to keep it locked so it doesn't. Now that's, that's high tech. <laughs> That's high tech lock right there. It's zip tie. Yeah, I don't know. That's a normal radio. I know what that is. And this is your audio panel. I know what that is. The rest of that, I don't know what that is. Gear switch. That's always good. Flaps are there. Okay. Batteries dead. That's not surprising. Uh, oh, here's your prop. So you do this. That little, you can go manual down here and then you can control it or you can just do auto. And uh, I don't actually know what that switch does. Oh my gosh, my arm is so tired. Uh, let's see, avionics master, autopilot switch is there, good. It's got, oh, there's a heater. That, okay. I don't know what that is. Auxiliary, Argus, something, I don't, okay, I don't know what that is. You have your flight director, attitude, airspeed. So six pack is set up standard. And you have, oh, it's got a G thing on here? No, come on. Look, and he's pulled two Gs on that. How cool is that? Oh, roll trim. Oh yeah, look. So that, oh my gosh. So that, it's got a trim for the roll right here. Uh, snake's on a plane. Apparently the snake decided to join us over here somewhere. Now we lost it in the grass. And I'm, I'm not a fan of snakes, if I'm honest. That's, no. If a snake would have came out of the drain instead of a scorpion in the RV, I would have just burned it to the ground. No. But there's, it's, it's here somewhere. My snake grabber. You know what? We're just gonna move this plane forward. I'm not messing with no snake. Into the grass. Where did he go? Right here. Shut up. No, he didn't. <laughs> All right, I'm not going over there. Screw that. We're gonna move the plane across the street to the other airport. 
And this should be the elevator trim in the back. So if I roll that, yep. oh yeah, look at that. Boy, that's aggressive. Oh yeah, look at the stick. Boy, it doesn't take much on that. Okay. And then there's this, whatever this plug is for. You see that? I'm guessing like a GPS or something. No idea. What do we got back here? What on earth is that? Pecan. <laughs> That's what it looks like. The whole time I'm looking at this, I'm trying to figure out, is it gonna run again? Is it gonna fly again? Oh, oh hey, there we go. Even though it's got a tag on the back, but this is, I think, the official FAA tag. Built by R.E. R. E. Hane, Hane out of Prescott, Arizona. Huh. Data manufactured June 14th, 1995. And it's a Lycoming 0360 180 horse. At least at that time. Empty weight, 1251. So it's a little heavier than mine. Flight instructions. Point the machine in the direction you wish to travel. The main trick is to keep the big end forward. <laughs> what the heck? You see that? Uh, a bicycle spoke. I'm not sure what that's in there for. Probably very important. What other these pins are? What are these? No? Yeah, I, okay. They got red on them, so I'm assuming they might be important to something. Uh, but I have no idea. We got... Whatever the heck that is. Seatbelt, ELT. What? There's another bicycle spoke. What the heck are those for? Um, cowl pin tool. No way are these cowls pinned? <laughs> I'm not the only one that whenever they get in the Lance Air, immediately has to pee. Okay, what are we, any notes? Nope, and scribble, scribble paper, rags, towels. Okay, still no keys. Well, let's, let's shank the uh, cover off the engine and see what we got over there. Well, no, I take it back. While we're here, let's look at the landing gear. It's exactly the same as mine. It has the same little struts to it and everything. And these are collapsed because <laughs> they've been here a while. So we'd have to put some nitrogen in here, assuming that the seals and stuff are not totally blown out, which they probably are. Oh, this one's got rollers out here. Mine has got a chunk of wood. <laughs> this metal thing right here, Seth, can you see this at all? Yep. Got it. That is for heat coming off of the exhaust. And then I also noticed this right here. This yellow and that yellow over there, I think that's hydraulic fluid. Ew! There's an inspection panel right there. Oh, what, what is that up in there? Oh, it's the... Um... Oh, they got a charging thing! Oh, dude, that's a great idea. Some uh, nice leakage right there that's good so i'm assuming those actuators will have to be resealed right there well that's quite clever and it's just a ratchet strap holding it down <laughs> it's just a strap that holds the battery oh yes 
I gotta get that thing. All right. Now then, because oh, look, each cell is 1.2 volts, and normally you have six cells on a battery to give you your 12. And there's 12 set. This thing is a 24 volt system on this. Oh. Okay, note one, we gotta get these struts fixed. This is ridiculous. Oh, you know what? We got vice grips. I'll show you a trick on that sucker. Ha ha! Just, just happen to have 24 volts here. So, go on the other side. Come on in. This is the back area where they do all the restoration stuff on these super cool airplanes like the spruce goose which ironically is not made of spruce it's made of birch wood uh a dc3 they got i don't know what sort of airplane that is up there helicopter they got all kinds of crazy cool stuff here uh he told me the jumper cables were over here i don't know what kind of a radial engine it is but it broke a rod right here come over here and check this out that broke and it beat up and banged up everything else on the inside of it and so that's why the engine is bad but it'll make a good static display crankshaft but then it's got this other thing that's on the crankshaft that holds all the rods together so as it goes around all the rods go all in unison like a ballet <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> not not cool. What? Where is he? Ah, oh, that ill. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, Silas? Get over here. Get him going that way. Okay, shoot. 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 Oh, got a little snake over here. Oh. What kind of snake? Ugh. Gross. All right, where were we? Oh yeah, we we're gonna try to turn something on. Or to make 24 volts, you just add 12 and 12, and that makes 24. You go positive on one to negative on the other one. Yoink. Let's see, negative to positive, yeah, and then negative to positive, and that'll give us our 24. Okay. Okay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. things are turning on. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, cool. Flaps? Do flaps work? <gasps> yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, fuel boost pump. Let's see if that works. All right. Does it even have fuel in it? I doubt it. Ow. Okay, those are working. The landing lights are not. Landing lights, not so much. Oh, oh that, that one's works. working, but it's... This one's the broken one. And that one... Okay. All right, fill the temperature now. It's off. Okay. And I'm going to turn on. Keep your hand on there. You'll fill it. Okay. Okay, it's on. Is it hot now? Yeah. <laughs> so that little tiny flap thing right there... Ooh, that's cool. So this is the fuel selector here. Main tanks, which are the wings, the header tank, and then off. And you can see the wings out there, watch. So if I go all the way that way. So that's neutral there. Let it grab a hold. Look at it, yoink. Now watch, I'll go the other way. And go back that way. That's cool. Dude, like this stuff just turned on. We need to go in there and see if we can't hunt down some keys and potentially log books. All right, let's go. 
This is Richard here. He's been helping us. And uh, look at the other building we're in. Holy, I never noticed that before. <gasps> Dude, that thing is huge. Holy crap. I did not realize that that Predator, whatever kind of drone that is, was that stinking big. There was the SR-71 they wouldn't let me buy. I tried. He said, here's the keys we have. Good luck. <laughs> Let's see. One. Nope. Slide. Wait. Ha! Lance Air 360. We may have struck gold. And then we need to see if we can't find some sort of records of this because I was... It was sold to me with no records, no anything, nothing, take it as is, where is, good luck, I hope it turns out well for you. We weren't even sure of the key, and this, I don't even, we still have, what, the glass air, and the helicopter, and we're going to go ahead and start the other ones up while we're here as well, but we don't have any idea where the keys are, but we got one. Show us the way to the uh, file cabinet of, they just have a big massive place where they hold all the files, everything. We got to dig through that now. They were saying that everything they have in here, being a museum, is the real deal. They got like full leather flight suits and stuff. 24 volts. <laughs> so I don't know if you plug it in or something. It keeps you warm. What? Yeah, I guess. Um, B-Set, look at that. Property, you, it doesn't even say U.S. Air Force. Air Forces, U.S. Army. That's before the Air Force became the Air Force, and they were still part of the Army within 1942-ish. Holy cow. Look how good a condition it's in. That's unbelievable. Just oh, amazing. I forgot we were looking for records. The original drawings from the Spruce Goose are in here somewhere. Yeah, they're all, all within... Each of these you see. Yeah, look, it even says birch. That was that's what that airplane's made out of, birch. Yeah, so. I, I'm legitimate. I don't want to touch it. I'm afraid of yeah. 1943. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna gently, and then not touch any more of that. <laughs> but you can see how many drawings. Wow. So, pretty much from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven rows of file cabinets. That is insane. We're looking for L, Lance Air. Right, H, L. L. Okay, let's try this one. What are the odds? Hey, my SR-71 stuff. <laughs> Flight report. Maintenance records. Come on. I see a Lancer book. That's good. Hey, that's our tail number. 44BH. We're we're right spot. And look at that. Here's a folder of Lancer. Anything anything else? Okay, it goes to that to that. So uh, let's see. This is the first time I'm opening this. I have no idea what's in here. Oh, hallelujah. So by the way, an airplane without this little log is scrap value. With this little log means that it's more or less flyable. You can, you can at least fly. Let's see the last log entry. All right, it says 11.13, 6.1 hours, aircraft ferried from Paradise Valley to the McMinnville, Oregon, for delivery to the Evergreen Aviation Museum. <laughs> How cool is that? 2003 was the last time it had an, uh, in, an inspection, an annual condition inspection. Actually, I've still, we don't have the airworthiness certificate, but if it's got this in it, we should be able to at least get one from the FAA pictures. Oh, there it was. That's what it looked like right before we uh, delivered it. Exactly the same as it is now, which that's a good sign. Oh, yeah, look at that. Exactly <laughs> what, it, what it was. And a whole write-up about this? Sportsman's Pilot. What year was this? Spring of 1997. Oh, my goodness. 
that's the man right there. There was a whole article written up about this airplane in 1997 in the Sportsman's Pilot. We're going to set that out. That is, that's pretty cool. That is his airplane. Top speed, 260 miles an hour. Yes, yes it is. I can attest to that. <laughs> oh, come on now. That's pictures of him and I assume his wife in Arizona, I'm guessing, is, and they built it. Oh, how cool is that? That's under the seat right there. That's where the seat is. That's the wheel trim and the numbers that we see it goes like that. So that's where you sit and your legs come up. That's the stick right there. Wow. Man, this, oh, there's something on the back. Yeah, right there. December 10th, 95, Deer Valley. I was looking at the build on that airplane and it, it, it looks like a better build than mine was. And I thought mine was a really, really good build. Look at that. Wow, is there nothing on the back? All right, oh, hey, here we go. Nah, we got some <gasps> registration. Oh, glory, hallelujah. So we got special airworthiness certificate. Mwah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Oh. <sighs> you have no idea how relieved I am that we found this stuff. Because this means, because of this paperwork I found, okay, we found the engine logbook here. Like, I cannot begin to tell you, this just saved me probably six months of paperwork with the FAA, just finding this folder and this one particular piece of paper with these logbooks. Oh my gosh. Oh, mwah. So that means, boys and girls, we have the paperwork in order that it could fly, will fly again. Um, now we just have to see if it'll start. And we know that it flew here because we have the logbook entries. It made a six hour flight. And I think this is a picture of it landing here or at least running when it was here. And I assume nothing looks like it's changed that it was parked over there right after this. I think this one's going to fly again. That is amazing. I mean, it, it has, we've got the serial number of it. Can, can go back and find out what it originally was from Lycoming, and then we can surmise by the parts that are put on it what they converted it to. This was all the test flights that they did to get the airworthiness certificate. This piece of paper, they had all these, said, I have inspected this on this date and we did these Lazy 8, Chandel's, Loops. It did a loop? <laughs> what? Hold on. And then it says barrel rolls, aileron rolls. Can you imagine being the test pilot of some dude's airplane that built in the garage? And you're like, yeah, we're just going to go out and do a loop in it. No. No thanks. <laughs> you have no idea how happy this makes me. Oh, it's like for a month, because I've been working on this deal with them since January, and it's now September. And the whole time, I was told no logbooks, no keys, no anything. So you have no idea how, <laughs> how relieved I am that it's got the documents. Oh. This is the hard part, honestly. The mechanical side of it's not the hard part. Yeah. It's all the paperwork. Yeah, you locked that, locked that one. Yeah, I did. All right, well, let's go start it. Holy. These are MREs from like the 80s. I know you need to eat one. Pork patty. Blech. That one's gross. I remember that. I used to eat these as a kid when my dad, he was in. There's two beef stews here. Do you think they'll let us 
open one and eat one? <laughs> Do you think that you, I don't know who I would talk to. Could I, could, is it possible to talk to somebody to see if they'll let us open one? And, I'm sure we could figure out something. Silas, I got lunch tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Beef stew. <laughs> so in these, they would have the little bottles of Tabasco sauce. I really miss the chicken alakine. That one was my favorite. Uh, and then they would have uh, dehydrated peaches. I remember that. It was a little square like this, and it was like a cookie. You <laughs> and ate it. Now the crackers, they could build the southern wall with the crackers because those things were hard as a brick. They tasted like dirt. It was awful. I'm gonna, we're, we're just going to set that one right there to see if we might have lunch tomorrow. That'd be fun. Now the trick, we have the key and it says Lancer 360, but does it actually, is it the, the key, right? <laughs> Turned, goes in. Oh yeah, the battery is unhooked, so I'll just leave that off. Oh, hallelujah. Well, let's pop the cowl off of that. Let's do an inspection on the engine and that kind of stuff. Maybe pull a couple of plugs. And, I, and then check to see if it's got gas in it, and I vote just freaking send it. That's what they're talking about. This is the rod things. What the other desiccant spark plugs? For when it's stored, it soaks up the moisture into here. We're missing spark plugs. <laughs> Does it have them on the bottom? Yeah, it's got plugs on the bottom. We're missing four spark plugs. Not the end of the world. Ooh, there's yellow jackets right there. Yeah, I got them all! Gross. Okay, so right here is the fuel servo. This is called a transducer. So fuel comes in here, it spins a little thing and tells you how much fuel is flowing through there, up to here, and then it goes out to there, into there, it goes chick chick, and then it goes and then it goes and then it goes ring, like that. Come on. They're pretty dirty, but they're, they're there. Pretty football. Yeah, we're gonna need some plugs. But they might work to start it up. That is a very good sign. Those little desiccant spark plugs. Okay, let's check. Got the belt right there. That belt is 10 years old. Yeah, that would be nice to replace that. It's nice and tight though. Prop safety wire. Got the little wires right here that go to the propeller that control it. Okay, oil. Let's check the oil. And this stem is not safety wired and it's supposed to be. Okay. Oh, we got oil. Uh oh, that's rust. You see that dark spot right there? That I think is rust. That's not good. I think this is the brakes, the brake master cylinder. It's got dual, what the heck? Oh, weird. It's got an electronic ignition on this side and a magneto on this side. Oh, that's weird. I was wondering, I saw the little auto advance switch in there. That must be, for the ignition system that's on this. No vacuum, that's good. This is the oil pump here. A remote oil filter somewhere. That, um, I don't see like a regular oil filter, but there's this weird contraption. I don't know what that is, but it goes to the oil. God. I don't know. Put it in the comments. Do you guys have any idea what this gigantic black block thing is? No idea. 
I was expecting to find a remote oil filter. Unless that's what that is, and it's just got like a big ding inside there. That's the oil. Yeah, look, right here, that's where that rod goes all the way back through. That's what the rod is from back there. Okay. Oh. Let's take this little spur plug out. Okay. Got all these beads in there that are desiccant to keep everything from, or at least keep the moisture. We should just do the entire condition inspection right here in the parking lot. <laughs> Stick my thumb over it to see if we can get any compression. Oh, listen. Son, I thought. Let's hook it back up. Let's see if the starter works. Honestly, the oil does concern me. If I'm honest with you, it's really old oil. I think it would be okay just to start it up. All right, battery's on. Uh, engine stuff should turn on. There it goes. We're looking at the PSI right there and really I'm just curious to know if this thing is gonna turn over so all right let's double check around the prop to make sure we got a clear prop Ooh, that's close all right here we go the first time in over 10 what did we say since 2003 20 years the first time in 20 years this thing has seen power to that that propeller all right here we go All right, clear prop. How is that possible we have a dead battery? Can I get a clear prop? Yeah, there you go. Forty PSI already. We put some gas in that header tank, throw the spark plugs in this thing, and send it. Alright, now it's time for this well thought out California gas can. Thanks. Because it takes three hands to hold back all the safety levers, and then a small trickle of fuel actually comes out. Gosh! There's nothing to see here, folks. Oh. Golly. And yes, I got 100 low lead half gas. Do you see any pouring on the ground yet? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, where? Right here, you see it? Oh, crap. As soon as you asked me, you went down the next to There to there. That's definitely a no bueno. Let's go in. Will it change if I turn it off? That is most unusual that a stainless steel fuel line will leak like that. Mmm, fuel. Here is the problem. That fuel line is leaking. Yep. Oh yeah. All that fuel was inside that sleeve. Honestly, let's just go in and see if they have a little piece of Dash 6. Went across the street to a place called Precision... What is it? Precision Support Services. That. He's, this is uh, one of the main guys. And he said, yeah, Jimmy, I know you're doing some sketchy stuff, but we found a hose in our 
old hose bin that you're welcome to try. This is a bad one. Hopefully this is a good one. And I, I just gotta admit, you know, they got some really cool stuff. I'm trying to sweet talk them a little bit, see if we can't find something interesting to, to fly. Because they got a lot of helicopters. Is that mostly what you guys do here is helicopters? Yeah, primarily helicopter utility, fire contracts. Fire because I noticed this has a grabber thing on the bottom. What is that? So that's a hook that'll Here hold a uh, lawn line and a bamboo bucket. That'll oh. drop water on a fire. A bamboo bucket? Bambi is that the bucket. ones that you see on the videos where they yeah. put them in the pool? Yeah, put them in the pool, they, they pull water up and they go drop them on the fire so ground crews can get closer to it. So this is a firefighting helicopter then, or yep. what it's used for right yep. now? For right now, and then we also haul heli skiers for this. We'll do heli skiing for this aircraft. Come on! Like up at Mount Hood or wherever? We'll have to come back then. We might still be here at that point. <laughs> man, okay. Well, sir, appreciate it. You bet, man. Thank you guys. Yeah. Precision, what was it? Precision Support Services. That they're at McMinnville Airport across the street from the Evergreen Museum. You got it. Got it. All right, let's All right, go man. see if we can start that thing up. Cool. Thank Good you, luck. sir. And I definitely did not take off some of the bolts to the oil cooler to get this line to fit. Okay, here we go. It's holding, okay. Up. Up. Okay. Let's go see if we have any fuel leaks now. It's holding at 21. Okay, we got spark plugs are in, leads are tight, fuel's in, cap is on. We've checked our leak. It's an acceptable amount of fuel leaking. It does have brakes, which I would have never thought in a million years it would have still had brakes, but it does. So that's a good thing. We've got oil in it. It's just one thing left to do. And in case we decide to go flying into the back of the spruce goose, we're just gonna go ahead and buckle up. <sighs> yep. <laughs> The uh, mic thing even works in here really, really well, and it should because it's PS Engineering. Why would it not? All right, how many guesses do you think it's going to be before this thing fires up? All right, let's guess four. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with three. Go ahead and put in the comments how many you think. Okay. Pumps on. Fuel pressure is building. And can I get a clear prop? Clear prop. And clear for out. I guess when you turn the button on called ignition, it'll start. Pressure 71. It fired and there's lots of smoke coming out. Bolts are up and charging. All right, there's a lot of smoke. I'm turning it off. Okay. Woo! I don't know if that's good smoke or bad smoke. That's a lot of smoke though. Oh, good Lord have mercy. Good smoke is whenever the dust that's been building on there for 20 years, oh, that stinks, burns off of it. <coughs> Nikes. 
Well, it would have been on the first try, except I forgot to turn the ignition switch on. There's a little switch for ignition you turn on. As soon as I hit that, and it went ka-thunk. Did you hear that, that thunk? Mm -hmm. It went kunk. And then I hit the, the ignition and tried it again, and it fired right up. Oh, it's a piece of tape. I wonder if the exhaust had a plug in it. I didn't think to think about that. Being in a museum, <laughs> having a plug in it. Hey, we're gonna try again. All right, clear prop. Wow, this does not sound healthy. All right, there's smoke again. That is a significant amount of smoke. At least the RPMs have kind of stabilized a little bit. And it idles at 650 RPM. All right, the massive amount of smoke disappeared. And Silas is not waving at me and crazy, so. I didn't even notice an RPM drop at all. There we go. The gallons per hour is stuck though. I dig it. Gonna need some work before it flies again. I think this one's gonna fly though. I think we got us a good airplane. <laughs>